Also, that we approve the claims that are presented this evening. No second. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor Sheet? Aye. Greg Miller? Aye. Megan Sheet? Aye. Okay. Um, were there any public comments out there? Okay, thank you, Amy. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and start on the department report. Uh, Chief Shoemaker, you want to start? Good afternoon. The first item on the agenda is the firewall licensing renewal. Uh, it's a quote uh, for a visual edge IT. It's for the watch guard total security suite uh, for a three year uh, commitment of $4,576.25. I asked them to quote the three year, uh, it's about $1,500 savings over the three years. Uh, obviously, the, for everybody, the firewall is what prevents um, hackers, you know, cyber terrorism or Anybody getting into our, our server, um, it monitors the uh, network or any traffic that uh, doesn't belong. So we our current set of license ends. Uh, if you remember, I think we did one year last year and kicked a cannon and to this year. In we didn't know if we were gonna continue to have that equipment. Uh, it, it'll, it's, it'll go with us to the new building uh, eventually. Um, so I'd ask for board approval uh, for the mayor to sign this quote and get that. Uh, Three-year licensing plan, and you do have the money in the budget. Did and you the, that? Yeah, the computer and technology line item. Okay. But this was a license that we got the uh, email earlier about. This is uh, the same one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the watch guard uh, firewall license renewal. I'll check it. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor Sheets. Aye. Greg Miller. Aye. Megan Sheets. Aye. Uh, I will uh, I will pull the um, the body armor from the agenda tonight. We, you know, the county uh, had a quote for like thirty seven thousand um, dollars. Our officers, uh, our SWAT members, uh, Brady Sorrells and Zach Nichols, um, have got this probably down to around ten for us. They've been doing their work. They uh, actually went out uh, on their own to get some uh, similar equipment that will work. So I don't have an official quote. For the board yet, so I'm going to pull that uh, for tonight. Uh, the final thing is is board approval to transfer uh, a Chrysler 200 um, from the police department to the parks department. There, uh, it was a vehicle we were going to trade in on a car that we're going to receive in the fall, the insurance claim car. Uh, we were going to receive only about $2,200 for that Chrysler. It's got 103,000. Miles is exactly what you know. He's, I know, uh, uh, Bart has given up his truck for the workers to use, and it's a good car for him to, to get around. So I'd ask for that, that approval. I thank you for the, the departmental uh, cooperation with each other, and I'll make the motion to allow that to transfer. Second that motion. Roll call, please. Mayor Sheets. Aye. Greg Miller. Aye. Megan Sheets, aye. And thank you, Scott. Well, Check him with the Parks Department. I had to give him a ride one time, and that was one time. <laughs> Once you gave him the ride, he thought so, we had to do something about this, right? I, I took him to the police station and said, have your pick. Oh. <laughs> and he picked that one. And he picked the car. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's all I have. What's not going up? Sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah. So that's all I have, unless there's any questions. I've, I don't have anything. Anything for Scott? Thank you, Scott. Next up, 
Street Department at Stephen Forsyth. Uh, I guess you guys want me to go over the uh, uh, new bush hall that we approved through the city council, so I'll start with that. Um, I think I talked to you, uh, our, we have two bush halls, one of them is, is really old, needs to be replaced, and we went through the, um, Mary, you'll have to help me with the line item, what it's called. Okay, the grass lean. Grass lean. Yeah, it's a grass lean fund, so. and according to that, uh, the council has to approve any purchases outside of filing liens. I know there's a couple other purposes, and uh, the council gave him permission the other day to go ahead and, and use money out of that fund. Let me go through here and find some other quotes here. I got two quotes. One was from Reynolds, uh, John Deere in Lebanon, the other one was from our TTD uh, here in Frankfurt. What is it called? TTD? Okay. Um, for an MX7 rotary cutter, uh, BB uh, Reynolds, uh, John Deere and Lebanon was 38.79.84, and the TTG John Deere here in Frankfurt is 36.45. So. Uh, the approval through the board of works to uh, go ahead and get this taken care of and uh, get it ordered so we can get it and use it for the summer. Do you have any questions for Jason on this? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase uh, of the lift type rotary cutters presented by uh, Jason. I'll second the motion. Mayor Sheep, aye. Greg Miller, aye. Megan Sheep, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next thing uh, kind of came up all of a sudden here. I've been having some issues with my computer. I had to work uh, email. Uh, kind of everything went black on me this morning. I uh, rebooted it, and then it popped up with numbers as big as the, the Frankfurt on the front of the of the. Uh, desk here. So, uh, um, Shannon, I think I, I got to everybody uh, kind of explained why he thought I needed one. Uh, the terminal is going to be fine to keep. Uh, it'll just be the computer, the mouse, and the keyboard. That'll be replaced. And I guess the way I should present it, it looks like to me the most it could be is $1,217.90. So I guess not to exceed that is what I would ask the board to approve. And you do have the money in the supply line. Yeah, we'll use okay. the supply line in the immediate. In the email you presented, it's um, the other's impossible to repair. So do you have, do you know how many other options for Jason? So I'll make the motion we approve that purchase. No second. Sure. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor Sheep? Aye. Greg Miller? Aye. Megan Sheep? Aye. Jason? Your computer. Could you repeat that? Figure to me. Yeah, one one thousand. That's uh, not to exceed one thousand two hundred seventeen ninety. Thank you. You're uh, the last thing I just kind of wanted to go over with the board of works. I think you wanted me to do this today, Mayor, on the on what we decided to do with paving. Yeah. Okay. Um, when I sent everything off to BFNS to have them help me with. Uh, uh, getting some some close proximity and amounts for 22 different street projects. Um, it came back to 1.19 million, uh, which is obviously more than we have uh, as a city to spend this year. We're looking at 920,000. Um, I think you all have it in your packets. Uh, I don't know if you want to go through all those or if you can take a look at those. Um, Basically, those those projects that are listed there, except for the ones that are obviously um, marked off, um, and then at the end you'll see other. That's basically showing how much we have left. So we're going to be searching for another project between now and then uh, that'll fit in that category. And I think we have several that we can we can find. Um, that's just a matter of measuring it, and uh, probably be able to find. 
Uh, just for instance, Harrison Street is probably going to be a pretty close idea of what we'll be able to do. It's pretty close to the same amount of money. Um, so that's kind of how we'll look at it. But we'll measure it and have it uh, available so we can add that uh, to what we have, which I believe that'll put us at being able to do about 20, 20 different projects, which is really good. Um, you know, um, I did have a call from, uh, I wanted to speak on Vermont Street uh, specifically a little bit. Uh, I got a call from uh, the pork producer um, down there, and uh, they've been having some issues with that street. That's the one that runs right, basically right in front of the building. Obviously, they get a lot of truck traffic through there, but um, it's one that's been put off for a long time as well. Um, but uh, he had asked me about it today, actually, so it was nice to be able to tell him that we were looking to get that paid for him and gave him the information on when we would be able to do it and things like that. Um, just to speak on a couple others, 4th Street, uh, if you drove 4th Street, 4th uh, Street's in bad shape, uh, Monon. Um, we did speak, Greg, just so you know a little bit about Monon is uh, when that was repaired a few years back, um, it wasn't necessarily repaired the greatest, the correct way. So I'm not sure what we're going to find uh, underneath there when we go to milling that. So we may have some some other things to do with that uh, in reference to that street. Maybe not. I, I just don't know until we get under there. Um, but uh, there are things that they they'll do for us that doesn't doesn't cost us any extra money when they're there. They, they may run a little asphalt over a soft spot or something to, to help firm that up a little bit before they actually put the, the asphalt over it completely. But uh, just to kind of fill you in on that a little bit, I was talking about. Um, I did reach out to the waterworks and the sewer department. Um, I talked to Jim today in reference to the sewer department. I think we're in good shape there. Waterworks gave us some, some possibilities as projects they might be doing on some of these. But I think we all came to the conclusion, I think it's, you know, you can't go on what might happen. Um, we always know, we always know that, that possibility, you know, whether it's weather related or a project or something like that. But nothing, I think there was an intersection going on with the State Road 28 project off of McKinley and Prairie, that area right there. Um, but it sounds like that might be done before we pay. So that may not be an issue at all. So. And as you can see, we, we looked at a lot of uh, nickel plate, boomer, some of those small streets off of McKinley that have been kind of neglected over the past uh, that are smaller, you know, a little bit cheaper to do. Um, Powder Drive, Hawthorne um, was, a, was a bad one in certain areas. And Williams Road, I was even getting a number of calls. Um, so we'll, we'll pay Williams from, from Walnut all the way down to basically the bridge or the entry of Forest Drive. And then obviously there's others, but just to kind of give you a little once around on what we what we talked about, and you know, I think 20 projects, regardless of size, um, you know, some of these smaller streets like Boomer and and things off of Nickel Plate, off of McKinley, once you pay those, those will last a long time. So they're not as And Tenassee Council, that ordinance going before them to do an additional appropriation of $20,000 to put what's already was appropriated for this year. So that's how we're going to be able to um, do the 920000 if we get the PPMG grant, which we're hoping to get that. Um, we have the extra money, of course, from the COVID um, that we didn't know. So that's what we're hoping to be used towards that. Maybe we need to give that priority right now, but you know, at all costs, we'll do as many streets as we can. We're at the mercy of NDOT as far as you know, when they get back to us once the grant uh, is July 5th through the 31st. So after the 31st, we'll go to them, and then you know, hopefully by sometime August 1st of September, um, we'll get the information back on what we received. And then in between times, I'll be getting ready to come up with less and we'll try to come up with when I can to start the bid process as quick as possible. Because I think it was great last year in October when we paid. Uh, and you know, I think that worked out pretty well. And if we, if we, if 
things come back the way they, they, they I'm hoping that that's when we'll be able to do it. So. I'd like to offer just for those in the public that might be viewing or meeting this evening that the CCMG, those are um, grant monies that double the investment that the city provides. And I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. Mayor, am I correct on yeah. that? The $200 over some of the this evening will basically get 400000 So that's we're doing that to maximize the benefit to the city in that regard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Appreciate that. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Jason. Hey, John. Uh, in your packet should have been the uh, bids for the seal coating of the alley. A little explanation of everything going on there. As uh, Jason and I have had a conversation where he may try to see about. Um, patching the alley where the bricks actually expose themselves prior to uh, any seal coating. Um, the bids that we have received for seal coating, one is from Premier Seal Coating for a total of $395. It's approximately 1,808 square feet. Um, the, other per, the other bid comes from Moore Seal Coating LLC. Their bid is $275 to seal coat the alley. And uh, I, I hope that this, the uh, bid from Moore's is the one that we can accept. The one from Moore doesn't specifically um, say about the, the crack filling on that, but it's by verbally, is that being shared? Because the crack filling to me would be. Um, Another measure of repair in that alley. Then. They say steam cleaning and uh, oh, I see. Uh huh. Uh huh. But it appears that the other might go another step. That's a that's a great question. I'm going to say that we probably just asked about the seal coating, and Premier probably was is the one who came back and said that, hey, if we do that, we might as well fill the cracks also. Um, I can't answer in behalf of Moore's. If you want me to look at asking them prior to accepting the bid, I can always bring them back the following month, next meeting. It'll just be in a couple of weeks. Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay, um, we'll do. I would suggest doing that. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Make sure that we're having the same thing go down there. All right. The next one up is the signs for the 50-50 sidewalk program. We actually went out and, and uh, received three bids for these signs. The first bid comes in from um, Jeremy Warren. Jeremy Warren bids uh, for uh, 24 by 18 white corrugated plastic signs, $23 per sign for a total of $690. Um, the next one we have is from Longhorn Graphics. Um, it's the same bid for the same type of a sign. Um, there are $20 per yard sign with a $25 to $35 art fee. And the last bid comes in from uh, Graphics Guardian. Uh, the same thing, 24 by 18 with stakes, $8.50 each for the sign. And so um, we hope that you'll accept the Graphics Guardian um, bid. I'll say this about Graphic Guardian's bid. The, um, it doesn't talk about the material, if it's a corrugated or not, but I think at the price point that they're offering, um, it'd be worth seeing the longevity of the signs that they have to offer. And I would move that we accept their bid at $8.50 each for the 30 double-sided yard sign. Uh, I'll second that motion. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just I'm just wondering if, if if we're talking the same item uh, for that, but at, at that price difference, uh, to get the word out because 
that money is available from the cost of the project. Mayor Sheep, aye. Greg Miller, aye. Megan Sheep, aye. Um, also, I think that today you should have received our ongoing projects that occurred during the week of June 21st to 25th. And uh, this morning, um, one of the sidewalk corners that um, got damaged during the uh, rerouting of traffic on the corner of Clay and South Street, um, we actually had corners that the city would have been responsible to fix. They were in the handicapped corners um, on the uh, south or on the northwest corner. Um, so the mayor asked us to see about bids. We we took two bids for the project. One was from Jim Michaels. One, the other one was from Compost, uh, Christine Campos. Um, and Campos came in at a lower bid. Um, the the folks who um, lived at their at the property, Kelly Denham, um, wanted to have. Uh, Michaels do the job. There was twice as the cost of, as what compost was. And so we basically told them that if they accepted Jim Michaels' bid, that we would only proceed with the lowest amount because that's what we would normally do in the bidding process. And it is something that we would have normally fixed because it was ours to fix. It's a handicap corner. Whenever we do a 50 50 program, the handy the corner is never added on to the property owner because we make sure that the plates are put in properly and and the handicap section is done in the, in the proper manner so that corner the corners on any 50 50 sidewalk always gets paid for by the city it's not even part of of the 50 50 process so jim came in to get his permit today we actually waived the fees because it would have been something that we normally would have done or taken care of um, had she accepted the lowest bid. So um, I'm here now asking you if you will allow us to um, waive the fees on a on a permit that we normally would have taken care of um, in the project. I hope I've explained that properly. Well, I, I might understand that the um, owner at that address is contracting with Jim Michael. That's right. Okay, and so the city is not spending any money on that repair. Well, we're we're spending what would have been the half of, the, the half of that's right. Okay. Thank you. Is, is that something we can do, Les? Can we negotiate um, with that price? If, if it comes in higher, can we say that they can have that contract, but we'll pay a, a lower price? I really have to. I'd have to go back and review the line. Bid. Yeah, well, we actually went and had two bids because it was something we were going to do. We told Kelly that, hey, you know, we won't, that they won't accept the highest bid. They'll take the lowest of the two bids to do the project. So she was concerned about an issue that you, in concrete, you can't be concerned about. And that is, will it be the same color to match her sidewalk that she has now? Thinking that Jim Michaels put her original sidewalk in, that he would be able to match it up. Well, I, you know, I think that's the luck of that. But um, that's who she decided that she wanted to have, and I just told her that we would not pay for half of of that amount because it was the highest of the bid. We'd be happy to take care of the of the lowest bid in the process. It's something that we should have done to begin with, but she wouldn't didn't want the person that we wanted to have do the project, do the project she wanted Jim because he thought maybe he could match the color of the concrete. Do we have to determine that today? No, we don't. Okay. Let me take a look at that and we'll give you an answer. Okay. All right. That's all that I have. Do, do you still need to have um, the C wave for us? Um, as far as the wave, I, I think that, I mean, if you want a way that we don't charge the permit on something that we normally would have done, I, that's okay. I, I would accept that. Yeah, I think that's just contingent. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make a motion, John, that we uh, waive the fees on that project. I'll second. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor Sheehy, aye. Greg Miller, aye. Megan Sheehy, aye. This evening we'll be coming to the council for a rezone on first reading. and. 
Well, we look forward to the potential of new housing being built in Frankfurt Center. Thank you. That's a good call. That's a good call. Um, uh, we have a new hire. Um, she has passed her drug screen and her uh, background check. Um, uh, we're looking to potentially, if, if she passes your your vote, to get her started on next Tuesday, the 6th of July. And she'll be working 20 hours a week on a part-time basis. Um, right now, that would be three days a week. We're, we're trying to get her scheduled so that in her job that she has right now, she can continue to work both of her jobs if, if it works out for her in that manner. Um, and so hopefully she'll work with us on Mondays and Fridays, maybe a Wednesday, and then she can work at another job on Tuesday and Thursday. July 6th. July 6th, okay. I'll move that we um, accept Don's recommendation for the filling of his part-time position in building services. I'll second the motion. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor Sheets. Aye. Craig Miller. Aye. Megan Sheets. Aye. Okay. Thanks. Thank Megan. you. <laughs> Thank you. I could have gotten a lot of trouble when I got back to the office. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Save the best for last. <laughs> um, so I have two weddings. They're uh, one's at Prairie Creek Park, one's at the Neighborhood Center. So I can start with the Prairie Creek Park one. It's uh, Mary Cr or Macy Craner is the applicant. We've used her in the past for a few different uh, They've used the Neighborhood Center multiple times. So they are going to have alcohol, but they're just going to have champagne for toast. So just like with all the alcohol, we just send it on to the police department and they make the determination, you know, whether they want anyone to be there or not. So the uh, dates are the the eighth and the 9th of July. Um, this it's seven to nine, uh, and then two two eleven are the two other dates. So then it's a reception, wedding reception, not wedding. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make the motion that we accept the um, application for use of the neighborhood center on the, uh, July the 8th and July the 9th. I'll second. Roll call, please, Carol. Mayor She. Aye. Greg Miller. Aye. Megan She. Aye. Okay, and then we have the other one, which is uh, same, same deal. If this is Dennis Humana, uh, again, they've used the neighborhood center numerous times, even this year. So. They're just going to have beer, but again, they'll, they would have to consult the police department. So um, it is uh, the 24th of July, and it is from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And actually, they're going to be there the whole day because then it's 5 to 1. So. And I'll make the motion on this approval for um, the use of the neighborhood center. No second. Roll call, please. Mayor Sheets. Aye. Greg Miller. Aye. Megan Sheets. Aye. Okay, I did find two uh, two boys that want to work at the splash pad, and so they've been through their HR process. They've been through their drug screening. One other has to have a drug screening this week, but um, I'm not going to see him this week. He's got the pass last week. He was just sick, so he, he the doctor asked him to stay home that day. Um, but they are, I think on Wednesday would be his drug screening. As long as everything goes okay, then I would like them to do training on Friday and then start Saturday. And then their first full shifts would be this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So you want someone at the splash pad every day then? Correct. Okay. That's the goal. Okay. On the weekends. So in the daytime, throughout the week, it's still going to be our staff in and out. But, okay. Um, the weekends when there's no park staff around, then they would be manned. So they're gonna have they're gonna be in the ticket booth, and they'll have. They've already basically during the interview, I kind of ran them through the process just to see how they would do it, and they both did fine. So I've got no reservations about them. I didn't want to have anyone under 18, but uh, they're high school students, and it's a seasonal job, and in for a legal back. So it's gonna work out fine. As long as you guys are okay with that. Okay. Specific to the weekend 
Like Correct. The yep, they're they're both working Saturday and Sunday and all day. So no need to drop it. I'll I'll move that we approve the hiring of two seasonal employees for the weekend spot test. Second. Mayor Chief. Aye. Greg Miller. Aye. Megan Chief. Aye. And as soon as you get that drug test result back to me over one minute. Okay. Robin, start. Okay. Did you want me to give a quick rundown on what we talked about with the, the school? Um, if you want to, if you want to talk about okay. it. Okay. You wanted me to do it up uh, So I'm going to be talking to city council later um, this evening. But just for the Board of Works' knowledge, obviously the police department you know, came back much more expensive than what they were anticipating. I mean, our guys are telling us it's probably going to be the same scenario. So we've already um, basically sat down, the mayor, I, and Kyle, and a few other people in the meeting, and we talked about what would be the first potential large cut, um, which unfortunately is going to be the um, lap pool. So the difference between cutting the lap pool and cutting any of the amenities is if we add the lap pool at a later date, the infrastructure is still going to be there. If we remove the other entities, then they are not, we're not going to have the same infrastructure. We might not be able to add them later on. Whereas if, if we do the lap pool removal, which is not a guarantee, if it comes back, what we've done so far is we basically turned it into an alternate. And so the contractors will look at it and they'll say, they'll give us a base bid, you know, on the entire project and then that would be an alternate. Um, it's something I've expected, obviously, for a long time because of just the prices through everything has went up enormously. He did give us a little bit of good news that, you know, wood, some things are coming down, like it's dropped 20% since the last time they looked, so when their contractors went off. Um, but, I mean, we're still talking that from last year when it was first bid, it was up 73%. So we're still up over half of the cost, you know, 50%. So the, uh, the best option, I think, when we look at what the constituents of Frankfurt wanted, you know, a lap pool wasn't on there. It wasn't one of their top choices. It was something that I think should be added at a later date, and I think it would be a good idea to do that. But we're either, A, going to have to raise more money, or B, probably give up on having that right away in the project. So the one thing I don't want to do is cut anything that is going to affect the family and people bringing their kids there and having rentable areas and areas for the small children all the way up to, to the large ones. Because as of right now, looking at the project, nothing is different. No, nothing is different that's going to affect like the families or people being there, spending their entire day. Really what's going to happen is we're not going to have an opportunity for someone to go rent a lane and swim. Uh, we still have a large swim area. There's still an open swim. You know, they still have a pool area that's going to be up to six foot deep in places. So they still have a swimming area, you know, if people just want to come and swim around. But they probably will not have a, a you know, an actual area that you can rent lanes. So there wouldn't still be an area that there's a diving opportunity? Correct. There would not. I think it'd be um, to our advantage and probably advantageous. I think I'd like to take a look at um, what it's going to take to run that pool with a little more foresight as what um, Park Uptown. I mean, obviously, after the fact, we find out really the things that we need to do to keep that running. Sure. Um, so as we add amenities to that, you know, how will that add to the manpower that we need for that? Because I think um, there's also a desire that we have the availability of you know, swim lessons and those kinds of things. I've heard a lot of comments that people are going out of town to do that. So I think to be mindful of how we, um, I think, entertain everyone uh, into to that too. But I just, I wasn't, I was really surprised of what it takes to keep that splash back going. Um, so we, we have that amenity, but we also, um, there's a lot of responsibility with that too. So sure. One thing that's going to be different is we won't actually fire. It's going to be a mayor's hat company. I, I don't want anything to do with the people yet. It's going to be a mayor's hat company. You know, that's, so that is one thing that's going to be drastically different. Um, what I want to build in, too, with their contract is 
And same thing that John Messenger does in Lebanon is they actually have the same type of process and they have a pool manager that runs their splash pad as well. Um, so, because that's something that I think is needed because someone that's there pretty much all the time. Um, and that's what they do. So, it, so there, there, it's very good questions and there is going to be a lot, obviously. Right. And there's a lot of maintenance, you know, with the contracting company, they don't do any maintenance. It's still going to be the park guys that are Right. And that's, I guess that's one of my concerns is that you know, we have someone else uh, responsible for our investment. So sure. I think we just have to be mindful of that too. Of, I agree. Of putting that together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you're doing a great job. Obviously, this is not something you just walk into blindsided. So yeah. I, I know you. <laughs> I know you do your due diligence on that. But I think you just just as a reminder, I think for myself, be mindful of that when we move forward with the project. Sure. And like you said, I think something we decide to do differently is not just go ahead and bid it out at a couple projects. Yeah. We're going to have a base bid and asking for our ultimate. So that way they're making, you know, like, you want to do the last two and then you pick one of the other alternates you can do that, you know, whichever way you want to go. Give us a little more choices so we're not just stuck on that base bid. Yeah, but when you're talking about saving either I mean, so the water features alone are between $100,000 and $278,000, which we're talking about the last one, we'll save more than that, like that $15,000 off that. So we can leave five potential water features or save five by the last one. Right. So, we're, you know, so look at, as last year, looking at a, a concession stand or something as an amenity like that, you know, how do we put something Useful yeah, so we're talking. We're looking at if we were to say no concession stand, then we would save an additional like three hundred and some thousand dollars. Um, we've already cut that back from it was originally one point three, you know, down to like three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So yeah. we've cut a million dollars out of the concession stand already. Um, that would be a hard sell, I think, to try to tell them that we're going to build them on an aquatic park and then no, nowhere to buy a drink or snacks or anything. They'll be vigilant on that, um, using the, what we have already present, and using that concession stand that we have and putting that back into, into I mean, service. that's possible, but we don't have one right now. Right. 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 It's, just, it's just a, a build, an empty building. Right. So. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. Okay. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 
do we need to do on this? We've taken bids, we um, took them under advisement. Do we just leave them there? Or do yes. We need them? Okay. No, uh, they can be under advisement for 60 days, up to 60 days. Greg, am I going to use these ones as bids and not just their bid pages? No, they're just still under advisement. Yeah. Okay. We've been working hard on that, haven't we, Scott? And delicately to see what we can get worked out. <laughs> Keep smiling. Okay, uh, does anybody have anything under unfinished business? I just have one quick thing. Um, the, just a reminder to the department heads, mostly the quarantine pay protocol that we are currently under it will be terminated July 1st and will be under the new protocol, which allows for uh, 10 days of COVID pay only if um, the there's a vaccination record for that individual and they have to have uh, proof of a positive COVID test. So if you have any questions, you can call HR. Anything else? Okay. Um, next, we have new business, special event approval for the hot dog festival. Who has that? Do you have the event form? Do you have the? I do have the form. I haven't completed it, but I need to ask the office. To okay. That. Okay. Do you want to come up then and talk to us about it? Okay. Um, when we met a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, the setup for the hot dog festival and not using Clinton Street. So I have a, a new map I want to present to you to just get your opinion on if you think it's going to work or should we change some things up. So this looks a little different than the map I gave you the other day. It's a little more basic. So if you look where the um, vendor setup is in the yellow, um, that is where we would normally on Main Street and Washington Street have our, our vendor set up. Um, usually on Clinton Street is where the food tent would be, and then we would have um, the stage. So we've moved the stage over to Main Street beside the Regions Bank location. Um, we have moved some things into the Regions Bank parking lot that would normally have been in Veterans Park, and we've moved some things down in front of the police station all the way down to the library parking lot. So I think that with stretching it out and using Columbia Street, so we can make everything fit, assuming that all of the utilities can be um, ran and, and you know done the way that we talked about in our meetings. And I did talk to Todd, and as far as I know, it's going to work for them. I could have dropped some new lines for them. Great. Yeah, great. As a temporary store, but okay. yeah, so that's what we're going to try to do. Okay. So if, if you're okay with this map, then I am going to be uh, applying for the entertainment permit tomorrow and the special events permit I'll have um, submitted tomorrow as well. Any questions on the map? Yeah. Where's Columbia going to be shut down now? It would be right at Clinton. 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 Then to, go to the north, to okay. the alley um, behind Colors. Okay. Or just you before the diner. across. Columbia then to the library. Okay. Can we need uh, to use what is out of Clinton Street to get from Clinton? I won't need south of Clinton. We're not using Clinton at all. From no, I mean, on Clinton Street. Anything north? No, we, we chose to go north of Clinton Street with everything. Okay. Scott, have you seen the map? Okay. Is that pretty good? Yes, I just placed a few more things on there, so it's. This is all due to the um, needing to make sure we have safe traffic to continue through town with all of the 28th Street. 
construction in the Washington Street. And um, I really appreciate uh, the city and the festival event planners accommodating the city's request to keep Clinton Street open. I mean, there's been a, a lot of rethinking to make that happen and a lot of changes. And uh, we know it's not going to be a forever change, but um, I appreciate all the efforts and the um, cooperation. We're looking at this as probably a two-year project since we have 28 years. So, you know, we're going to try to make the best of it. And, you know, I'm sure we'll learn from this year and make Apply some adjustments for next year. Yeah. So. Uh, and I, well, I appreciate you working with us. I think you know about the system and the situation on the street. It's not like we just, we had to make that change. And uh, I think it's going to be much safer and much easier for people to be able to navigate through town. So thank you so much for working so hard on it. You're welcome. Thank you for working with us. Yeah, I'll, yep. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the street closures for the festival as presented. Well, well, please. Mayor she Aye. Mayor she Aye. Aye. Okay. Do you have any other questions okay. for us? Or Unless okay. you have questions for me, we're moving to the human height. Okay. And then okay. uh, you said you have the uh, paperwork or? Yes, I have that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the map was okay before I submit anything to the state as well. Okay. 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 Thank Great. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here. Um, next, we have the United Way Pay Center. Okay. I think I'll speak okay. to that. Okay. Um, yes, I also serve on the United Way board, but. Um, the mayor was contacted about um, the city employees campaign last year was a great success and everyone was very generous. And so um, the theme last year will be maintained this year and it's be a superhero in your community. And of course we have all of our employees are superheroes for what they do. But um, there is an earlier campaign aside from the general campaign that's called the Pay Center campaign. This year it runs from August 2nd to August 31st. There really is no other different methodology other than to conduct our citywide employee campaign in that time frame. And uh, the mayor has agreed to do that. Uh, the Board of Works as a whole has agreed to do that. And so um, we'll be putting that in place this year and, and thanks to everybody, the same level of interest and cooperation that you applied last year for your departments will look to happen for this year as well. So you'll be getting information closer to time. You're expecting information, and we'll probably have a representative, won't we, from the yeah. United Way, like we did last year. I think I take one around to the department. Uh, so uh, there will be a pace center kickoff type thing, an event, and it might be a breakfast. I'm not sure what they'll have, but um, it is a a smaller handful of um, with the farmers bank. I know I don't know all the players in the pace center campaign, but there's about um, eight or so entities in our community that choose to do the pay center campaign. So I'm excited they invited us to do it this year. And the city did really well last mm -hmm. year, or for this year. The difference between last year and this year was a huge difference, and we appreciate it. And I know department heads probably had a lot to do with that to get your employees involved and, and you engage them in this yeah. big thing. So we're excited about it. I think the key is, and this is what our department heads did so well, is awareness. It's not, there's not arm twisting involved, but if you present the facts, the benefits to our community and give them the opportunity, then the employees do make their own decision. I know, um, you know, it, different, different businesses might provide little incentives and that sort of a thing. It becomes kind of a little competition sometimes. It's all in good fun, um, but it's, it was so well done last year and thanks all the department heads. And United Way does do a lot of service. Absolutely. So, um, but I appreciate them asking us, and yeah. they thought we were good candidates for that. So, does anyone have anything else? Annie, what do you have for us? Nothing tonight. Nothing? No. Okay. Anybody else? Clarence? <laughs> no. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. John and Bart. Yeah. <laughs> John, your son.